Welcome to another aero terminology video from the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. These aero terminology videos are created in order to make the design videos a little bit shorter. Since aerodynamic terminology is used in quite a few of these design videos, we'd end up using up a lot of time in each video to explain the terms over and over. So in those design videos, we will refer back to these aero terminology videos. In this video, we're going to talk about the mean aerodynamic chord. You'll see in the literature that's usually abbreviated as MAC, usually capitalized MAC, but it can be lowercase MAC. Well, we've talked about what the chord is in a previous aero terminology video. Real quickly, the chord is just the distance from the leading edge of a wing or portion of a wing to the trailing edge of the wing. Well, the mean aerodynamic chord as you might guess, it's kind of an average aerodynamic chord as you go across the wing from the root to the tip. In this case, it's a chord weighted average. Now, what does that mean? If you are familiar with calculus, you'll be able to figure this out. But even if you're not familiar, what we are doing is multiplying the chord by itself as we go across. What is the impact of having this little square part of the chord? That means the longer the chord is, which is typically toward the root, the more impact it has on this average. And out toward the tip, it'll have significantly less impact. Well, what if you were trying to take the average chord going across, which would be called the geometric chord? Well, in this case, it's just C going across. This really just results in the surface area divided by the span. That'll give you the average chord. That's what this ends up being. But you can see, C is just linear. It's just the chord as you go across. Here's the chord is squared. Well, let's think about what that really means then. Let's say we have a root chord of four feet and a tip chord of two feet. Well, two squared out of the tip is four, but at the root, four squared will be 16. Even though the root chord is just two times the tip, four versus two, the square is 16 versus 4, so it's 4 times bigger. Mean aerodynamic chord is going to be moved in closer to the root than what the geometric chord would be. Well, okay, why do we want to know what the MAC, what the mean aerodynamic chord is? We need it mostly for doing pitch calculations. So pitch stability calculations, for the most part, we'll use it. You can think of it as the, an equivalence. You know, a straight rectangular wing that has a mean aerodynamic chord that you've calculated will have the same pitch characteristics as whatever your actual wing is, which could be a tapered wing, swept wing. It could be a wing with multiple tapers. But if you can figure out the mean aerodynamic chord, then when you go to use your pitch calculations, you can just substitute a rectangular wing with that chord and you'll get the same pitch characteristics. So it makes it much easier to do your calculations. All right, well, let's get into how you can calculate your mean aerodynamic chord. Well, if you have a rectangular wing, guess what? You don't have to do any calculations because your wing chord is the identical to your mean aerodynamic chord, which makes sense, you know, given what I just talked about, uh, equivalence on a rectangular wing uh, with a mean aerodynamic chord. So, you don't even have to do a calculation there. But what if you have a tapered wing? Well, in this case, if you have a, a tapered wing with a sweep or without a sweep, there's a simple, I guess it doesn't look greatly simple, but there really is a pretty simple uh, calculation to determine the length of your aerodynamic chord. So this C sub R is just your root chord of your wing, and C sub T is just the tip chord. And you just plug it in here, do a calculation. Generally, this is going to be just a little bit inboard of half your semi span. So, if, let's say you had a wingspan of 30 feet, your semi span would be 15 feet. Half of that would be 7.5 feet. So, your mean aerodynamic chord is usually going to be somewhere inside of that. So, it could be 6.5, something like that. It depends on your taper. So, the greater your taper, the bigger difference between your root and your tip the farther inboard is going to be from that half semi span. Now, for you doing your uh, pitch calculations, you're also going to want to know that X position of the leading edge of your mean aerodynamic chord. And that's pretty simple. 
you first calculate the y position, which I just talked about, and there's a really simple calculation for that. And again, all you need to know is your span, your tip cord, and your root cord. That gives you your y position from the root. And then you just do a simple calculation. You need to know what the sweep of your leading edge is. You take the tangent of that and multiply it by your y, and that gives you how far your x position of your leading edge is from the leading edge of your root. And if you don't know what the sweep of your leading edge is, but you know what it is of your half chord line or your 25%, it's pretty easy to do a calculation to uh, fix that. But if your leading edge is straight from tip to tip, then of course this is going to be zero and your x is going to be zero. So it makes it even easier to calculate if you happen to have that. Now what if you don't have a simple tapered wing? Maybe you have an elliptical wing. Maybe you have a wing with several tapered sections. Like on most airliners, they have two or three tapered sections. We can do that pretty easily by computing the tapered MAC for each section and then average those. So let's take a little step back and let's do a little tapered wing example. So a simple tapered wing. Let's not bother with the leading edge being swept. It's just straight across tip to tip. Let's say we have a 30 foot wing tip to tip. We have a root cord of five feet and let's have a taper ratio of one half which means the tip cord would be at two and a half feet so using that equation i was just showing you in in the previous slide we plug in our numbers and do a little calculation and we have the mean aerodynamic cord of roughly four feet the average cord the geometric cord is 3.75 feet so you can tell that the mean is going to be a little bit longer than the average than your geometric average that's always going to be a case on your tapered wings so what is the y calculation the y is how far out on the wingspan from the root the position of the mean aerodynamic cord is going to be so again here's the y calculation we plug in our numbers and we get 6.67 feet so the y calculation for a geometric average would be seven and a half feet so you can see this mean aerodynamic cord is a little bit inboard of what you would have for the geometric average. And that's always going to be the case for a tapered wing. Now generally, you don't need the Y calculation. It's kind of nice to have, but really the X calculation is more important. But you need the Y calculation in order to make the X calculation. That's the only reason we would actually calculate. It's kind of interesting to understand that it moves the mean aerodynamic cord in, but you really just need it to do the X calculation. As I mentioned before, when you have a more complex wing, one that has a couple of tapers or that is curved, like this one here, which is similar to the wing I'm talking about using on the UWS-1, it's a little more complex to come up with your mean aerodynamic cord. Now, it's not too bad if it is a wing composed of multiple tapers, and that you'll find that frequently on airline wings. In that case, it's pretty easy. You've only got a few tapers. But when you've got a curve like this, you end up having to divide the wing up into lots of different sections. Now, where you don't have much curve, similar here close to the root, you can actually do a pretty wide section. Now, if I were doing it, I might come clear out to here for this first section. But then as you get more and more taper, in order to be accurate in your calculations, you've got to make your sections look narrower and narrower. And if I were doing this for the UWS-1, I would not have it be quite this wide on this particular section. I'd probably cut it maybe in a quarter to try to keep the accuracy fairly good. But for this demonstration purpose, I made it a little bit wider. And just because I wanted to have these lines be a little bit wider so we could see them on this uh, drawing. So let's talk a little bit about some of these terms over here that are used up here in our equations. C sub n is the chord of a section. In this case, it's the left-hand side or the inboard side of this section. C sub n plus one is the outboard portion of this section. So in this case, the sections are numbered. Um, if I were to have, I should, probably should have drawn them on here, but if I had a number of sections, if this were section 19, now I call this chord 19, I call this chord 20. And that's all these sub numbers mean down here. The other thing you're going to want to know is leading edge position. X equals zero, position equals zero is the leading edge of your root. 
and then going down would be positive numbers. So for example, this leading edge position here of x ln sub n, which would be like 19 in the case we were just talking about, would probably be something like six inches, something like that. At n plus one, which in our example here is 20, and this might be a little closer to seven inches, perhaps. The other thing we want to know is how far out on the span our section is, and that's what those y number is. So y sub n would be here at 19, y sub n plus 1, n plus 1 would be 20. Now the 19 and 20 don't really matter, it's just a reference number. What really matters is the y value. So these are the equations that we saw up above, but in this case we're talking about what the average is. Normally an average would have a bar over the top, but I couldn't figure out a good way to do it with the drawing program I was using, so the bar is underneath. But in this case, this means the MAC, mean aerodynamic chord for the section. So it's the average mean aerodynamic chord for that section. This is the average Y for the section, where that mean aerodynamic chord is in our section. X is the position of the mean aerodynamic chord in our section from this zero reference. And to make these equations a little bit simpler, these almost can all be converted into a taper ratio. A lot of these terms can. That's what this lambda is, taper ratio. So in this case, it's the chord at n plus 1 divided by the chord at n. So it's simple taper ratio. So the outboard chord over the inboard chord. And just substitute that in here on these equations. I mean, aerodynamic chord looks very similar to the one we had before. It's just that some of the terms have been moved around a little bit. So anyway, you can calculate your section mean aerodynamic chord using all of this. This is pretty simple. We got some more terms here to talk about, but it's not too bad. This sigma is just a, an operator that means we're going to sum some values together. And we're going to go from section 0 to section n, whatever that happens to be. In our pre previous example, that may have been something like, oh, 25, 30, maybe a little bit more than that. Let's, let's, let's say 29, 29 sections. So we, zero would be the first section and 29 would be the last section. So we're gonna have all those section numbers and we're gonna sum up our values for all those sections. Again, we have our mean aerodynamic chord average for a section. So what we would do is we, let's start with section zero. So we go and get the mean aerodynamic chord of section zero. We multiply that by the surface area of section zero. What's well, the average chord of that section multiplied by the span of that section? You go through and add all those together, all those mean aerodynamic chords for a section multiplied by the surface area for a section. And then you're going to get a result of that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to divide by a sum of all the surface areas for the section. So you're going to get this result divided by this result. And what that will do is give you your average mean aerodynamic chord across the whole wing. As I mentioned before, if you've got a curved wing and we're using this taper mechanism, it's not going to be accurate. It's going to be just a little bit below what your real number is. Now, guess what? Going to calculate the y is the exact same thing we did for calculate the mean aerodynamic chord. You just take the y value of the mean aerodynamic chord at each section, and then you do the same multiplication and sum here, and the sum here. Same thing for the leading position of the x. You just do the same exact thing. So that gives you the average for your mean aerodynamic chord, the average for your y position of that mean aerodynamic chord, and the average for your x leading edge position of the aerodynamic chord. And you got your result. Now it takes a little more work, I would not do this by hand. That's just way, way too much work. If I were to do this, I'd do one of two things. I'd use a spreadsheet, which is probably the way I would go, or write a little program. And it's such a, a trivial little problem that I probably wouldn't bother writing a program unless I wanted to include it in a bunch of other calculations you do for a wing. Then it might be worth doing. But a spreadsheet would be easy to do this. You just need to know your X and Y positions of each of those locations along your wing. And then you can write a little spreadsheet that will do all this for you, no problem. Now this video was done in preparing for doing a design video on calculating the tail volume. We will do an aerial terminology video on what tail volume is. And for calculating this, 
pitched ability. And that's typically what I'm doing. I'm doing these videos on aero terminology right before I do a design video. I'm also getting ready to do a design video on the airfoil, so we're going to do a few more aero terminology uh, videos there. For example, a coefficient of drag and, and a coefficient of moment. So those will be look, coming out uh, pretty soon.